Okay, we're going to start off with some onions and some garlic. And yes, even though this garlic is nearly as big as the onion here, it is one clove of garlic. It's called elephant garlic, I think. My mom grew it and gave it to me. If you don't have one this big, you can just use like a bulb of regular size garlic cloves. And of course, you can tell that I have about twice as much onion as I have garlic. If you like more garlic or less onions or more onions or however the math works out for you, you're cooking for you, so by all means, adjust the ratios. I had already peeled the garlic and the onions here, so I'm just quartering these up and kind of cutting the ends off that are, you know, gross and stuff and discarding that. And we're going to throw these in the air fryer at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes or so. And while those are going, we're going to go ahead and prep our tomatoes here. I'm just cutting the ends off and any bad spots that you have from, you know, homegrown tomatoes because birds and bugs and so on and so forth. And I had several jalapenos, so those happen to just be the peppers that I'm using. You can use whatever you like. If you like it hotter, you know, I would recommend like a cayenne or something like that. But this is pretty straightforward. You just cut the stem off of it. And the onions and the garlic were not 100% done with their 10-minute cook, but I had some room in there. And I'm going to have to cook this in two batches anyway. So I'm just putting some tomatoes in there to fill space and throwing them back in the air fryer. The goal here on the onions, the garlic, and the jalapenos is going to be to get a little bit of char on them, and we're looking to remove as much moisture as possible from the tomatoes. Kind of to recap here, the onions, the garlic, and the tomatoes all need about 10 minutes to cook to what I consider, you know, done, charred, and moisture removed. The jalapenos will do in about five minutes or so. You'll have some pretty nice char on them. And then when you get a blender worth of stuff, you can just throw that in the blender and let that go to town. And once I get everything blended down, I'm going to pour all of this first batch into a large bowl and wait on the rest of my tomatoes to get done cooking. Uh, if you'll notice, it's, you know, obviously going to be super oniony and peppery and garlicky to begin with because there was only three or four tomatoes in this batch and the rest of them are coming later. But the consistency of this is perfect. It's extremely oniony, but texture wise, this is top notch stuff. The peel on the tomato doesn't particularly bother me in salsa, but if it does you, once you've cooked them, it comes off like super easy. Um, so anyway, we've got the rest of our tomatoes and I went ahead and peeled this half and we're throwing them in the blender and then we're just going to add them to the bowl that we started with. And then all that's left to do after you get these mixed together really well is just season them. And I'm just using salt here and then some dried cilantro because that's what I had. Um, and then you just go a little bit at a time and taste it as you go. If it needs more salt, add more salt. It is going to be slightly spicier, freshly cooked like this than it will after it's set in the fridge for a few days. Um, so kind of keep that in mind if it's just like blowing you out of the water. Um, well, first of all, you're a crybaby. And second of all, it's going to calm down some. And then when I get it where I want it, I'm just bottling this up, taking a ladle, putting it into a mason jar. And I like these nice little pint size jars because they're great for giving away or taking to work or something like that. And then I put the rest of it in a half gallon jar for me because I love salsa. Now you could use a pressure cooker and can these and they would last for years, but I'm going to eat this in like a week and a half. So I'm not worried about that. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hope y'all enjoyed.